Good morning friends, it's John and today um, I want to talk in more detail about developing azaleas through drastic pruning. I've had quite a number of questions from people trying this method here recently um, and so I want to try to explain this in a little more detail. I must begin with an apology. I'm not much of an artist with a pencil or, or paintbrush to start with but with a mouse in my hand I'm just dangerous so uh, please excuse my uh, diagrams here but I think they'll serve our purpose. Our primary objective is to take the existing branch structure of old um, you know large nursery stock and use that as the foundation to develop um, a well ramified and well tapered branch structure for an azalea bonsai. So let's imagine we've just picked up a big azalea from a nursery. It's got a great trunk. It's got branches, long branches. It's, it's designed to be landscape, so it's much larger than what we need to do. Um, we're happy with the root base and the trunk, and we think we want to make a, a small tree, a small bonsai from this piece of material. Um, it has existing branches coming out already, but in most cases these branches are very long. So our very first step, our very first goal is to drastically cut back the branches. At the same time, we're going to drastically cut back the roots so that when this tree is ready, it'll, it'll have a, um, a good root mass that will fit into a bonsai pot. You can look at the videos about doing the cutback. You know, I use a saw on the roots and I cut the roots back hard. I don't do a lot of cleaning out. Zellia roots are a little different, but today I really want to focus not on the roots but on the branches. <clears throat> The first cut um, are going to be the first cuts we make are going to be the bases of our primary branches. So one of the things we need to keep in mind is how far out do we want that branch to go before it starts to taper. You know, azaleas grow these straight long branches that don't have a lot of taper. So um, my suggestion is is that you don't cut further out than about two inches. Now that's a rough estimate. You could do two and a half or three or an inch and a half, but um, the heaviest branches are probably going to be cut a little bit longer. The narrower branches are going to be cut a little bit shorter. So let's imagine we've cut our first branch. You can see now that, that I made this first cut and, and you can imagine in this drawing this is about two inches. So I've cut that branch off. I'm going to seal this end because this is, you know, I'm imagining this branch is the size of my finger. Um, so it's important that I seal that so that I get good budding here. So now I'm ready to cut my second branch. And then my third and fourth branches. You notice here I had a short segment before this one started to taper. So I chose not to cut it here. I went ahead and chose to, to cut it at maybe a secondary level because I, I liked where it already um, divided into two branches. So I was starting to get some taper. So your first drastic cutback is not going to take more than about five minutes. Um, use a saw. Don't use pruners. You'll damage the branches if you use pruners. Use a saw and make these nice straight cuts. All right, and seal these cuts. After the first growing period, what's going to happen is all of these branches are going to bud and they're going to grow like crazy. Typically, I let the first budding out go one full growing season, but that may vary depending on where you're at. You may have to go two growing seasons. I get a lot out of a growing season in South Carolina, but what I want to do is I want to just let these branches grow, and I can prune off any that I know I won't use. Um, but the next step will be after these have extended to a distance where I'm happy with the base where they're connecting, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to prune or, or remove some of the stubs at the end because they're never going to grow buds perfectly at the end. So you're going to have to clean that up a little bit. So here's kind of what that looks like. So um, you see I went from the uh, stubbed off ends now and now I have cut back not always in a straight line um, to to create a better transition between the primary part of the branch and the secondary part of the branch. Um, 
After I've done this, I'm going to go ahead and cut these branches. So this is what it would look like. So for me, this would be at the end of the first growing season or maybe at the beginning of the second growing season, just depending on when I get to it. Uh, shortly thereafter, it's going to look like this. Um, you're going to get new branches coming out and you're going to have that same issue. They're going to come out from all different places on these secondary branches that you've left and you're going to have to um, clean up the, the ends at some point. Don't do this at the beginning because you don't know where these branches are going to come out at. So you just leave them and you know we talked about two inches for this first primary. So let's reduce that length for the next one. We're trying to build taper. So if it were two inches, two inches, two inches, it's going to, it's going to look funny. So I like to reduce it. So two inches, one and a half, you know, one to one and a half inches in the next one and then an inch to maybe three quarters of an inch in the next one. So it's grown out. It's time for it to be pruned again. So now I've pruned it back. Um, so now I have my primary branches, the beginnings of my secondary branches. These branches are going to continue to grow and improve the transition um, as they develop out here. So you don't have to have this perfect when you cut back because by the time you go two or three more levels of, of branching out here, ramification out here, these transitions will get better and better with time. So now it's time to let it grow again. All right, and so now I've got tertiary and, and the fourth level uh, ramification growing out here. I will repeat this process, and this can go because I don't have to let these branches get as big. I'll prune these two or three times in the same growing season. Your mileage may vary depending on how strong your growing seasons are. Um, you know, if it, I, I wouldn't, I guess you're just going to have to determine yourself. Um, how fast it's growing, but I let these things grow out two to three inches. The leaves will harden off, the branch will start to harden off, and then I'll usually cut it back to one or two leaves. Um, and then it's going to bud from the base of those leaves and, and I'll get new branches and again I'll cut it out. Each time I make a cut, I'm just going to reiterate this, but each time I make a cut it's going to be a shorter distance than the previous cut. So I had a, about a two inch cut here, and then an inch and a half cut here, and then about an inch here, um, and then it'll go down from here, three quarters and then a half. Um, and, and that's just general. Those are just guidelines. They don't have to be specific. So, but um, if you leave branches too long, you're wasting time because you're going to say, oh, that branch is too long. I need to cut it back. And now you're a season behind. So um, I, I would be brave and make make hard cuts to start with. So, Okay, I hope that explains it. Um, we can go back over that again kind of quickly here. Um, you know, you're going to start with the whole tree. You're gonna, these are going to be the bases. So these are going to be the bases of your primary branches. When you cut those off, you're going to end up looking something like this. Um, then it's going to grow. After it grows, you're going to clean up the stub ends where it didn't clean it, it didn't grow all the way to the end. Um, I will seal these stubs as well. From this point, I don't st I don't seal anymore. Um, prune it, let it grow. Prune it, let it grow, and before long, you will have a very ramified. Um, tapering, very ramified and tapering branches on your on your big azalea. So in about three to four years in my growing season, I think I can create a reasonable azalea with this me method, a reasonable bonsai azalea with this method. So um, for those of you giving a shot, be brave, cut the branches way back. Um, uh, one of the other things, you know, I've done most of my um, pruning on satsukis or late bloomers they respond they seem to respond very well i've also done some on karumes and some of the other early bloomers um, and they will respond but sometimes i don't get as many buds from those as i do the satsukis so um, know that this method is best for satsukis or late bloomers um, it can be used on early bloomers and I've, and I've done it successfully but they just don't seem to respond quite as strongly okay guys i hope that's been helpful